Welcome to our session, SUSECon session about SAP HA on SUSE, all you need to know. My name is Fabian Herschel, Distinguished Architect SAP, working for SUSE in the SAP Linux Labs. In this session, we will speak about high availability for S4HANA application servers, as well as special instances to be integrated in our cluster and high availability for SAP HANA database and system replication. At the beginning, I want to speak about our best practices. We have a broad series of best practices, scenarios to be described, and we are all publishing those things either on partner sites or on our own documentation papers, so you can easily integrate and create your clusters uh, for partners, GSIs, and customers. The best practices are discussing things for S4HANA, Subnet Weaver, as well as for SAPHANA database in system replication in various scenarios, and uh, also uh, discussing things about how to integrate it into public clouds. Let us begin with S4HANA application servers, a cluster example. The mandatory cluster is focusing on the ASCS, the central services, and the ERS, the replication instances, here being shown on node A and node B. You can also build up a cluster of two or three or more nodes, depending on your needs. Other clusters are running primary application servers, PAS or AAS, additional application servers. And you can add Sapana system replication or other databases in the database oriented cluster. Now we are focusing on the mandatory cluster. Why is this cluster the most important one? Because there is no thing in the SAP architecture which is um, building up, it's a single point of failure. Whenever your NQ service will die and there's nothing which does process the switch over to the ERS, then your database, um, then your application transactions in SAP will hanging or will be rolled back so you do not have a continuous production. Our cluster switching from AS, uh, driven ASCS and ERS and switching both between those two instances whenever one is failing is giving you high availability for this single point of failure in the SAP landscape. The other cluster already discussed the primary application service. It is building an, something like a cluster, but at least a, a availability zone by its own because Two application servers could take over services from each other if you are using logon groups. You know that Subhana database can be configured in system replication, and if you have stable processes, you can do that even manually. We recommend it to run it in a cluster also. But the ASCS is really a single point of failure, and now we are concentrating on that. There is a difference between the ENSA one, which is the NQ standalone architecture one, versus ENSA two, which is the new one. The first one for Subnet Weaver, um, the ASCS, when it is broken, needs to be recovered on the same node where the ERS is running. This is why the ASCS is recovering the, the um, lost Q, uh, NQs uh, by attaching the same shared memory segment. After um, it has been synced to the shared memory segment, the ERS could be spawned up on another cluster node again, and so you have again a spawned up production. With ENSA2, the ASCS could be started on any node, either on the ERS node if needed, but better on any different node because it does recover the NQs via network. And this gives us a bit more freedom in the cluster to decide where to start workloads. 
With that, we created a new uh, best practice describing also multi SID clusters for ENSA1 and ENSA2. In our example, having three nodes running multiple SAP instances with um, multiple pairs of ASCS and ERS. And as you see in our picture, um, it's not needed that all ASCS or ERS instances needs to be running on the same node. It's even better that the cluster could place them just by getting the, the failure counts, um, the failure status. So the, the subsystems are being treated as completely different also in the cluster. The only thing we need to guarantee is for ANSA 1, we have learned the ASCS failing must move to the ERS side and this must be covered by cluster rules. For ANSA 2, the ANSA the, the ASCS could be placed on any node and if possible it should avoid to go to the ERS side um, to allow a spawned up um, NQ replication um, right after the takeover to, to uh, the different node. To allow a more direct and um, uncritical administration we have introduced the SubSUSE cluster connector. Um, this is a component which is within between the SAP start framework and our SUSE cluster framework. It interacts between them. Whenever Substart Surf needs to work on a special request, it, are, it asks the SAP included HA script connector library, is there an implementation available? And then it calls our script. So it could be that the Substart Surf asks the cluster, is a special instance driven by the cluster or not? It could also be that the cluster needs some information from uh, from the SAP start framework, like, okay, there is a call stop to be processed, so the cluster now takes action to do that. So this is just to keep the two things together. And the interesting thing is that now SAP admins who are not knowing about in detail about the cluster could start stop um, instances of SAP um, and, and you're not running into cluster failures if you're doing maintenance procedures and such, such, such things. Here we are going one step further. So now we are integrating even uh, an untypical SAP instance like the web dispatcher or the gateway. How to do this? In the uh, screenshot on the top, you see uh, in the process list, there is a process or a service name, Zap Web Desk. And this is how we integrated it in our cluster. You just use the same resource agent, Zap Instance, we see it on the bottom. And on, 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 uh, on the bottom of the slide, you see Monitor Services is Zap Web Desk. This is a one-to-one -one map or match with the um, service you find in the web console or on the command line output of subcontrol command get process list. So you just could think about how which services you want to bring to the cluster. You just have an instance being controlled by subcontrol and you can easily use sub instances to drive any of those um, instances whenever you have a service list which can be monitored. With that, Web Dispatcher, a critical component, could easily be processed in the cluster and we have published that in a blog on our web pages. On the graphical side, on the SAP side, this looks in the following. You can see that we have selected here an SAP system WEB and a WOO instance, which is driving the web dispatcher. And you can see that in the tab, high availability at the right, you can even see the product you are using. So you can see that it has been integrated in the cluster and running on a node, which has been, in my case, named Kronstein 01. 
On the left and bottom of the slide, you see the, the graphical occurrence in the SUSE HA Web Console, which is an interesting thing to, to have on the first side. Is everything in my cluster fine and running? And here you see three green dots matching to the IP address, the Web Dispatcher, and the Stonged SPD. An additional new scenario is whenever you have ASE in replication, the ASE is managing the replication and the switchover from the primary to the companion database by its own. However, there's a component which is organizing this externally, and this is the fault manager. And the fault manager is a single point of failure of this scenario. So we work together with SAP to first integrate fault manager into an ASCS instance, integrate it into our cluster. You remember the monitor services parameter and also to monitor the fault manager. Whenever it is failing, you can switch over um, and guarantee that the fault manager can work on switchovers for the primary companion database. And this helps to bring the a high availability also for this component to a higher level. Now we are working on extracting the fault manager even from the ASCS, so it is, uh, be, could be controlled and switch over independent. And uh, just building um, an SAP instance, which is starting and stopping and monitoring the fault manager by its own. And this could also be integrated with our SubSUSE cluster connector. So it is a seamless thing between how it has been shown. You can see it in the web console um, as, an, as a new instance and could work on, uh, on administration on this level. Now coming to Sapana in system replication and we have here on this overview four scenarios. The performance optimized scale up, we'll come to that a bit later. The cost optimized scale up where you have two SAP systems on the secondary side. The multi target setup, scale, scale up um, scenario where you have more than one replication. It could be a chain, it could be here a multi target situation. And even if you need more power in your HANA, a performance optimized uh, scenario for scale out where you have multiple workers, multiple HANA nodes working for one uh, HANA database. Focusing on performance optimized scale up scenario. Here you have um, Subhana and Subhana topology been working. Um, the, you have a virtual IP address bound to the primary. You could have um, optionally a different virtual IP address bound to the secondary. And this gives you the possibility even to use the read enabled um, scenario where you have read uh, queries being, uh, being, being, being processed by the secondary node, which gives you a better bandwidth of the and better workload um, on, on the primary node. So the primary is processing changes in the database and secondary could um, work on special queries being moved from the primary to the secondary side. There are multiple mechanisms in SAP HANA how this could be achieved. Either you could directly go to the secondary or you can use uh, something like hint files or hint configurations so your client application knows when to, to access the primary and when to access the secondary side. In this uh, performance optimized, and this is why we gave it the name together with SAP, um, you have a fast takeover to the secondary side because the tables are all preloaded in, in, in the memory or nearly all the data are preloaded in the memory. So you have a fast takeover time. Whenever the cluster needs to do an SR takeover, it is rapidly available on, on the former secondary, while the primary, of course, must be down. Some customers uh, even 
worse when uh, we did not have the read enabled uh, configuration said okay it is for me to cost uh, expensive to have um, a second node just waiting for a takeover so i want to have something running on this node i want to to to, to give it an, uh, some workload so this is why um, the cost optimized scenario runs an additional hana uh, database on on the secondary node um, but of course, this HANA has its own memory consumptions, and so the sub HANA secondary needs to reduce its memory consumption. And this is the, the reason why, in this case, the HANA um, table preload is being switched off typically. And when you have a takeover from the primary node, the secondary node, uh, you first need to bring down the non-productive here QAS system and then to tell the subpana to do the system replication, which then also uh, do, uh, has to load some data from disk to the memory. And of course, this takes a bit a longer time, but on the advantages, you are saving a bit cost uh, because you can use the secondary node and not just waiting for the take, waiting for a takeover. The QAS system in our case has been driven by the sub instance resource agent. Um, in the past, we have used sub database, but we are cur con yeah, currently in, in changing this setup because the sub instance has some advantages for in special multi-container databases and more complex things where sub database has some yeah, interferences with the SAP uh, sub-host control framework. In the multi-target scale-up setup, we are concentrating in the cluster on the first two nodes here, of the node in the middle one, which is, which is the primary currently, and the one at the left, which is the secondary. Um, the primary is again running promoted and the secondary again demoted. Um, and there is a second replication here from the primary to another secondary, but this one is not in the cluster. Depending on your configuration, the third node could automatically register whenever the primary would switch to a secondary side. So whenever here the middle node would maybe be in... Um, been crashing or the HANA would been crashing and the cluster decides to go to the secondary side, then here the third node could directly uh, register uh, and get its data from the new primary. This is um, could be optimized on SAP level and is uh, depending on your configuration. The performance optimized scale out is that you have multiple nodes, multiple one one master name server, maybe multiple master name server candidates, multiple worker nodes, and some standby nodes. In some configuration, you do not have standby nodes, but typically you have. And all those nodes on site A as well as on site B are working together in one cluster. Here in this example, we would have five nodes and on site A and five nodes on site B. And as this could be lead into a symmetric split, uh, we have one maturity maker in, in the middle, which is running no special resources for HANA, uh, just um, organizing a majority whenever complete site is down. Typically, this should be placed on a third data center or on a, or on a third place. So whenever one place is completely teared down, um, the maturity maker plus one left side could um, build the maturity or could, could continue the maturity and then continue um, the production. As you can see here, all nodes which are running SAP HANA workloads are running the subhana topology resource agent on the primary side as well on the secondary. All nodes are running the subhana controller um, resource agent, but only the master name server of the primary side is running in a promoted state, which allows us to place the IP address for access to the database gracefully. So in this case, it is possible 
that you can even move or follow our class you could follow and move of the master name so whenever the sap hana itself would decide to switch the master name server in this example from node a1 maybe to node a4 or a5 and this gives the cluster a possibility to follow such decisions transparent so your your client just needs to reconnect to the same ip address it does not organize to know about the topologies of a sapana and you just can continue for scale out we in the past we already had a SUSE hook for scale up we now also introduced a SUSE hook um, which gives the cluster the chance to be a bit faster be it a form informed whenever a system replication channel um, is getting trouble typically um, a commit whenever a system replication channel is hanging gets postponed sometime and whenever the commit is being released first our SUSE hook is called it could inform the cluster about the system replication status and then the commit is being released uh, for the application. So this gives the cluster to be nearer to, to the truth um, that maybe some uh, one commit is already in, uh, pending uh, or hanging and we can a bit more closely inform the cluster uh, as with the in the path the polling frequency. Sometimes you need to know why the cluster has been switched over, why the cluster has been done doing some things, which could be, this could be done either live, you can have a few on the cluster attributes being written into the cluster database, um, and you can do it post-mortem. So after something happened and you want to think about, was, it, was the cluster correct or not? In our case, we see that you have um, a thing like Subhana is our replay archive, which takes an HP report as base, and then you can filter the output um, with regular expressions, such as in our case, filtering the role attribute of node LV9054. And in our case, the attributes are changing from for P, which would be an OK running or best running primary over 2P and 1P, which means this is a stopped or in erroneous 1P uh, primary. And then you see that it is going to an S um, and later on to P again. So you see here in this, in this short uh, view that two changes in the cluster has been done. Then you can bring that um, maybe up into, um, in, in, into your queries about uh, what is in the logs about um, cluster transactions, or do you have some queries or commands from the admins? So you can figure out what happened really and did the cluster process the situation correctly or not. You could also create with Subhana is our monitor some graphical output um, HTML pages, which easily could be shown uh, using your favorite uh, browser. For seamless SAP HANA SR maintenance, um, we have introduced or changed um, um, yeah, the, the rules how to um, bind the IP address to the, to the HANA database. Um, in, so, so far, we bound it to the master slave status, which is correct. But whenever you have something to do with uh, on your sub HANA itself, you need to set either the cluster nodes or the resource uh, to maintenance. Now we recommend that you just set the sub HANA resource agents to maintenance while you keep the cluster in, in production, keep the nodes in production, and this is important, keep the SAP HANA topology resource in production. You see that in the, green, in, in the dark green coloring. This brings us to the following. You can do even as an SAP up update. And you know that during an SAP update, you need multiple times to do an SR takeover. You need first to update the secondary side and so on. And as Zapana topology is still running, it could still write to the cluster if it finds a running stopped 
primary or secondary. And so you can um, bind now the virtual IP address to the role attribute for scale up um, to, to the role attribute to follow this attribute. So whenever now the 4P, the running primary has been on the former secondary, you could now move the IP address to the correct node. And so you can continue with your, your production. So the cluster is helping you during this maintenance phase. So where you could get further information. First of all, um, as discussed at the beginning, um, the SUSE best practices for sub-applications, uh, where we have a um, special page, uh, page for uh, SUSE best practices, SBP slash all, on our documentation site, documentation.suse.com. And then we have our product information about uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for sub-applications. So whenever you want to know what is the what is the content of this product? Why should I buy it? Uh, what is uh, included in this bundle? Uh, then you can go to this sites. Also training, uh, we have even special trainings for SAP related um, tracks. And um, my colleagues and myself are writing blogs about towards zero downtime. You can find it on our SUSE pages in the web. Um, if you follow the blogs and going to the tag towards our downtime or just copy the, um, the URL being shown here. And then you get some blogs around the towards zero downtime in the SAP area for SAP workloads. Discussions like here for um, the web dispatcher has been discussed um, in, in, in this session. And so you get those informations a bit more near and uh, we are regularly um, updating blogs, bringing new blogs, bringing our ideas to you. There are also other sessions in SUSECon, um, tutorials, future views, and uh, even one hands-on being planned. Uh, the hands-on was um, planned for getting ANSA2 anchor application into the cluster, so it would be that um, if it would if it would be local um, in a, in a hands-on room, you would get um, a hypervisor with virtual machines, and then get your own chance to build um, in in some steps a cluster and to integrate an answer to ASCS ERS pair into the cluster. Other tutorials about um, Subdata, Subdata Hub on Kubernetes with SUSE Cast platform. We have um, the uh, best practice getting high availability for Sapana, also with partners. Um, a future talk about a product view and a tutorial um, for bootstrapping slash on Sapana NetWeaver class so with Terraform sold on public cloud. So uh, even building things automatically from scratch. Yeah, here the general disclaimers about such slides and talks. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this talk for SUSECON 20. Thank you for watching.